Oh, what's up, everybody? Everybody knows that we're big Star Trek fans over here, so we're going to just dedicate this video to Star Trek only. I'm here with uh, Dave Rose. I'm Joe Cronin. And uh, Star Trek uh, Picard Season 3 trailer just came out. The full one, the one that I've been really looking forward to, uh, just came out. So we're going to break it down from the beginning to end and talk about our opinions on it. We've had a couple of, uh, we've had about a day or so to go over it several times on our own. We haven't talked about it really yet. It sounds like I like it a little more than Dave does. I've been burned before by this Picard series, though. And I think it's really important to start really quickly with saying that, um, as by the way, my daughter's behind me sick. So if you're wondering why there's a redheaded person behind me, that's her. Um, you know, we did not like, I don't think Dave liked and I didn't like season one and two of Picard. Um, there's very little that I liked about season one and two of Picard. I, I kind of liked the opening of season one of Picard with Data and Picard. And that's about it. After that, it just started going downhill from there. Other than when Riker showed up at the end of season one. So those are the only two things I liked was the opening with Data and the ending where Riker showed up to help Picard. And then maybe season two, the first two episodes were somewhat bearable, but then the rest of the season was atrocious in my opinion. Do you feel the same, Dave? Uh, we started we started with so much hope for this series and this is from longtime star trek fans season 1 could have been spectacular and it it didn't amount to what was expected season 2 i don't even think riker showing up in at the end of season 1 even saved it but season 2 uh again showed a convolution of the writing staff not knowing in what direction to go so and, and quite possibly trying to cover every single enemy uh in one go and it just it ruined it because it seemed very forced and well right now with this teaser we're not seeing anything of the repercussions of what happened last season so is that going to be ignored well so from what i understand is terry metallis was given the keys to season three. So what I assess happened, this is what I, a lot of people believe this and have said this as fact, and it was my assessment as well, is that they, they know season one and two were not very good, right? They know they made a mistake, but they'd already committed to season one and two. And plus with COVID and everything, they just could not replan what they were doing. So they said, okay, well, this didn't really work the way we thought it did. So here, Terry Metallis, you take over. You're going to get the keys to season three. Terry Metallis is a fan. He he used to work on Star Trek when it was still the Rick Berman era of the Gene Roddenberry era. You know, so he he's one of those guys that has a connection. None Objection. Of, yes. I'm going to have to say this. You've got season one, which was quite fit. Uh, well, set, I should say, set in its ways. They were getting criticism online from fans and so forth. And yet, what did they do season two? They doubled down. The, the season two, especially with the going back to the 20th century and or the 21st century, the early 21st century, and making, first of all, putting things into a political scope and creating that, that, that was evident and it was annoying and it was unnecessary. Uh, also ignoring a lot of canon as well, but it, it just, it really, I think, uh, was detrimental to to yes. season two. There was so much wrong with season two. It's almost unbelievable in my opinion. Um, other than the D one of the biggest, my favorite things was John Delancey at the beginning showing up de-aged because he looks so much just like you used to look that it was kind of amazing. And then he snapped his fingers and, you know, they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on an eight second shot or whatever. But, um, yeah, let's move on to the season three now, because I guess the only thing we don't really have nice things to say about season one and two. I, I think we agree with that. And I, I think in my... Well, in, no, we do. We do. do it's we? the fact that we went in there not looking to dismiss it or to be detrimental or dismissive, whatever. Um, we were, yeah, we were optimistic. We, wanted, about we, 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 we were very positive in our outlook, hoping that we would see something that would continue on the story of, uh, you know, something that technically didn't necessarily need to end it all good things probably one of the best endings of any shows ever right and no matter what how bad the movies were or how bad this has been um you can always put on all good things and just go that's how it ends i'm done you know let yes. me get out of here 
because yeah, it's, it's, it's really rough. Um, now, so, yes. no, so I mean, I guess at some point we should go back and kind of, like, we could pick apart. We should have been doing this in the beginning because it would have made it more fun at least to be able to ridicule season one and two. Cause I, I, I mean, my wife stopped watching it. So it's, it's crazy. At what point? At what point did she stop? She watching? stopped. So first of all, Akiva Goldsmith is the one that's the problem. You know, he he just doesn't. I don't know what he's doing, and whoever Michael Shaban, who wrote the first season, and Akiva Goldsmith, everything they've done has been terrible. Now, you know Terry Metalis, his first two episodes of Picard season two, I thought were the best, <laughs> and you know he did those. So he kind of. <laughs> oh no! Don't die on us! Don't die on us! <laughs> did you give him your sickness? Who called me, by the way? Oh, sorry. I thought I had myself muted. <laughs> no, it's okay. We heard you dying. <laughs> that's what that's what I heard uh, Patrick Stewart sounded like on the sets. They had to like inject him with uh, some kind of stuff to get him get him up going. He I mean he seems so tired in season two. Yeah. All right. Well, let, so, so let's let's go right into this trailer. So right, do you have anything else to add to this? Because honestly, you know, my opinion is that the first season was a disappointment and a bit of a kerfuffle. And honestly, kind of, I don't know, man. You almost several wish... stumbles and false starts. If they had and gone he's a in, robot and now. I think that because they initially announced this from the get go, and even Patrick Stewart said that this was going to focus more on social issues as opposed to just telling serial stories on, um, you know, on a well, show. Patrick Stewart has been wrong several times. Unfortunately for him, he's not good at being involved in creative. It, he ruins things because he doesn't know what he's doing. He knows he knows how to be a great actor. He doesn't know how to you know tell his stories because he's self he's selfishly delivering what he wants. So you want to you want to but you, no, but he's had he's had creative control in some stuff and um, but it's usually certainly it's not shown usually that. good. It's not usually good though. I'm telling well, of you, of course not. No, no, that's the thing, though. He should stick to what he's good at, which is acting and not uh, interfere. But it's from the get go. The the premise was that it was going to deal with the Picard in a much different way that we saw on the show. Yeah. And usually you take you take the left and the right and you take issues of things and you, and you leave it up for the audience to decide while showing them something. But he has a very wag your finger at a certain party take. So you got that. You got. Um, uh, you know, I don't want to wear the Starfleet stuff. I want it to be more, you know, I'm a damaged everything that he's wanted to do. I don't want the original crew to be there. I want a different story. He's 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 over whatever over three. Right. The first thing is the pol in your face politics. The second thing is no original crew members. Well, and I don't know whether or not that's him dictating or like. I mean, those were they, they no they tried to get him on board from the beginning in a different story. And it wasn't until they carved the story completely different for Patrick Stewart. That, okay, yes. I was not aware of that. So, so yeah, you can actually look this up. Um, they had been they had been working with him for three for years, pitching him stuff, and every time he said no. And they finally came to him and basically said, "You have full on control, pretty much. What do you want to do with Picard?" And that's when he said yes. So he only said yes once he had almost full control about what's going on. And then they changed things, I guess, on him. And well, what happened was at the end of season two or sometime, you know, at some point, they clearly went to him and begged him and said, hey, you know, this isn't working and proved it to him why it's not working. And he's seen it's not working. And he said, OK, let's do what you want for the last season. I'll do I'll do more of what you guys want. And, and he's actually said this in the conventions, too. So. He doesn't say it quite like that, but that's basically what it is, is that, you know, he's doing finally what they want him to do in season three. So can you, we, can you tell Wesley to uh, disable the alert there? Yeah, yeah my uh, I just got beamed out of my office. Um, but so that's where we are right now. We're so the, the least influence from Patrick Stewart is coming in this season as well, far as well. Uh... Let's get into this then. Let's get into then this let's trailer. Go. Do, do you want to watch this at the same time and like watch the same video at the same time and just comment while it's running and not stop it or um, what do you want to do? I think because everybody there's a from, lot in this. Anybody watching this, I think, should have already seen it, watched the trailer, or you should watch it now. But I will frame by frame it uh, okay. for us, okay. and, and I'll put the captions up too. All so, right, so. It starts off with basically, and this is another iteration of a Tellarite, 
Uh, and their their appearance has, has altered massively since the 60s. Right. So uh, you've got, uh, obviously, Picard there at, uh, obviously, a, a very Western-style, you know, human restaurant. And then two uh, Starfleet agents, potentially, show up. Yeah. Tell and you, the, at, 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 uh, we're guessing Starfleet's agents, I guess. At, and it, well, they're well, they're suits. Yeah, there you go. You can see that with the suit. Uh, they're, they're they're wearing um, Starfleet uniforms, and they address him as Admiral. Now, did he go back to Admiral? Like, you know, they like what happened? There's no indication as to what happened afterwards. You would normally think, at least with the trailer, it would give some sort of build up to explain okay th this discrepancy in time from the last season to this one well i gotta i'll jump in real quick and i'll say that to be honest in my opinion i almost think that they are mostly trying to get away from those first two seasons as if they almost didn't happen i think that they they want this to be i believe they want this to be a love letter to the next generation and to all of us and that you can pick up and watch this having never really watched the first two seasons. And that's what the guy who wrote it, Terry Metalis, said. That if you miss seasons one and two, you could just watch this. So I don't think there's going to be much of a nod to the pre... And we know that most of the people from the last season aren't in this season because it was so bad that they just, you know, they, they either... Some of them, I think, were written out of their contracts. You know, that they were bought out of their contract. So like, we're oh, just going to ignore the whole new Borg uh, continuum that's... Uh, come in through a finagling of the time lines. So now you have bad Borg uh -huh. in uh, this universe, but also the new good Borg right. with um, Blondie. Whatever yeah, and, and quite honestly, if you think about it, to dive into it, you know, th there's been these kind of skews in the Borg uh, now for a long time. There's the Hugh situation where Hugh and the other Borgs were kind of like re... like a, like creating their own colony while non-assimilated. And then you've got this new Borg that's, I guess, the good guy Borgs that are guarding this wormhole or whatever that thing was from last season, which is ridiculous. And now you've got the regular Borg who are still out there being the Borg. And uh, potentially you could maybe even see them pop up again here, which because later on you'll we'll talk about why. But so, yeah, there could be all these different sort of factions of the Borg now, which is getting a little ridiculous. But... Yeah, they don't really talk about it. But you know what? You wouldn't want to put that in the trailer. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like we're trying to re – it's really supposed to be about the crew and we're back and something's going on. And all well, that stuff is going to be, I bet, in here but glossed over, really quick explanation type of thing. I think that the whole purpose – and obviously we'll get into this. The whole purpose of the uh, trailer is to build up the anticipation for what we're going to be seeing this season. Right. And to at least connect to the audience with that. Now, you know, not necessarily needing to show the Borg. Um, what we do see in this trailer, unfortunately for me, is lacking. But uh, let's let's keep rolling. Yeah. Well, I think they know people are like rolling their eyes at that stuff, too. But, you know, and I think they hoped for the Borg to be better last season than it really was. And if Terry Metalis had written it, maybe it would have been because he started off pretty good, I thought. Um, so yeah, so now he says, you know, we need your help, Admiral Picard, that, that trope. And here's the thing. There's going to be a lot of stuff in this trailer. That's going to make you roll your eyes a little bit. Cause you're going to be like, okay, every season is, oh my God, I'm, we need your help Picard. You know, every season is, hey, we need Picard. You know, it's like how yes. many people need this guy. So, yep. but here's the thing. I, I hate season one. I hate season two. I'm probably never going to watch them again. Mm. So that's okay because now they're doing it again and this hopefully will be the right way that it's done, that we need your help, Picard, and this season will actually be good instead of the last two times. Um, but yes, so we see this, what looks to be, I think, the Titan there from all the videos, people that I've reacted, watched. That looks to be the Titan and that might even be the new Titan. That's the Titan A. Okay, the Titan A. So that's not the one that they're going to commandeer in this season and it's not the one that is seen in Lower Decks or the game, right? Uh, no, apparently that's the original Titan that was uh, piloted, uh, well, that, that was captained by Riker. But we do have uh, Riker in a screenshot coming up where he is wearing Captain Pips. Strange, though. Um, but, 
he's wearing Captain Pips and says, you know, give them uh, everything we got. And then they, uh, I believe Picard refers to, uh, he says, uh, jo- uh, sorry, uh, LaForge, get us out of here or something. And then you have mm-hmm. obviously a shot of his daughter. There apparently there's he has two daughters in the show. One of them actually being played by his daughter. Yeah, it's a it's it's a coming up. Uh, we got it. We got a shot of Raffi. Uh, uh, we hate pretty much everybody hates Raffi. <laughs> so I mean, I think some of the new fans like Raffi. So that's at least the. I'm be- glad that you bring that up because yeah. there's a scene in this in this uh, trailer where uh, Worf does headbutt her into the ground, and right. uh, that that made me feel good. I think they know what they're doing, by the way. So the so Michelle Hurd's the. I would say the least favorite of the original fans or most of the older fans, but she is a favorite among the Discovery crowd, right? So why is she a favorite? Yeah, and and the reason why is you know it's probably the oh you know she just talks. I don't don't have to go into that. She, but so but I'm willing to, I'm willing to embrace her a bit more, as long as it's kind of called out that she's not a very good person. And if that was called out more, then I would be yes. more accepting. Of I would it. actually agree with that. And if she was one of these characters where, you know, sh- she was stuck at a certain rank, for uh-huh. example, she can't get over and how she ever got to the rank she got. I don't know. But if she was stuck at a certain rank, but, you know, captains would recognize, OK, this is this person's kind of troubled, but they did get into Starfleet. They they know their thing. Like this is the perfect person to put undercover, to send down to a planet, to go investigate things, because this is how they, you know, they know their their thing. Right. You know, they're like sort of a, a rebel and stuff. And um yeah, that that could probably translate a lot more to a character that becomes more likable because they know they're bad. Everyone knows they're bad, but they serve a purpose and they still have some sort of ethics. And and I honestly believe that by squaring her up with Worf, it, it's a way of like also kind of like, yeah, like the audience is happy that Worf is, you know, kind of putting her in a place a little bit. But I also think that, that I think that she's going to grow a little bit. And I, I honestly they're going to make her make her his apprentice or something. He's going to like take mm-hmm. her under his wing. And but it's just, well, I uh, think she's going to die. If that happens. I think uh, she's going to die. I, I think she's going to save. Oh, I think she's going to help them in some way by sacrificing herself. And it's almost certain that at least one of the TNG stars will be dying this season. It could, oh, well, season that, three. It could be Picard. I mean, and which actually, it might be Diana. Uh, it could be Diana. It could be or Diana. Diana. You think it's Princess Diana's back? Yeah. alive. Um, it could be. It could be Diana. I've heard that mentioned too as well. Um, but I hope. I really don't want. I think that they're aware that people don't want people dead. Um, and I think that they're sensitive to that at this point. That listen, I, people do not want more members I, dead. No, well, okay. Let's let's walk through the looking uh, the looking glass. I thought you were gonna say let's walk through the Wookie hole. I was like, what? The- yeah, <laughs> no, you can go that's, back an, to that's another show. That's the Star Wars show that we'll do. Um, but yes, the Looking Glass. Okay, um, we are already talked about this, Joe. Where they are, I guess, in the Kelvin verse, going mm. to bring in the TNG crew. It's into their universe it's not really a re i guess it's sort of like a reimagining but it's not like a reboot or anything like that in the main universe it's like sort of separate but that's what has been discussed isn't it possible potentially they might kill the entire cast off and hope because not only then it gets shifted over to bad robot company which is Mm. the you know uh is it josh whedon yeah i know that uh, you're thinking jj abrams is uh, jj abrams yeah uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, shift it over to there. They get to do them for the Kelvin verse. And then what does um, was it Paramount get to do? Well, they've already recasted, uh, you know, actors in the main roles and such. So now they can recast them into their universe to take over for when you know, uh, Strange New Worlds and all those other shows end up ending. You know? I don't think they're going to kill anyone. And, and now there's a possibility. Nobody, eh? No, I mean, oh. maybe there is a chance one person, but I don't think they're going to kill anything. I, if anything, I would have more of a debate that they would maybe attempt to bring data back somehow. I think that they're aware that, you know what, this misery, the sadness, you know, killing a character, it's not, it doesn't work. People don't like it. 
They didn't like when Data died in 03. They didn't like what, what you know what happened in the first season. You know, so this may but be. What them. about Data asking to die? I know. I don't. I don't understand that. That is a problem because then that goes against everything. And what you're going to bring him back after, you know? But I, I think that we're not going to see him come back. But what I do think is that in some way you're going to see him somehow, and I don't know how that is. Whether that's like they're on the holodeck, like looking at the old Enterprise, and they're all standing on the ship in a holodeck situation, um, and they go, "It's not right without Data." And they and they kind of like, you know, computer. And who would be the most perfect opponent for Moriarty? Right. Spoilers. Right. Um, then, um, then a then a holodeck version of data that's been somehow uploaded and allowed to utilize holographic, uh, you know, technology, especially at that point. Yes. Where now he can, because again, the technology that uh, got Moriarty out of the uh, holodeck was is ancient compared to what's available now. Right, right, right. Yeah, we're thirty five years or so removed from that. So yeah, I, I think you're gonna I think you're gonna see if anything add somehow get data in there. They have some kind of moment or something. Um, if and it, they could it, do that, they've sold me. Okay, yeah. that that's the showdown that I would like to see. Yeah, you yeah. know, because that's the thing though. The whole thing was well, Moriarty was created to mm -hmm. thwart not only Sherlock Holmes but Data himself. Right. So what would be the best way to fucking turn that around and reverse it than yeah. have Data? be uh, brought back to existence through holographic uh, technology. Wow. But way more advanced. I never thought about and, this. This is a great idea. And then just, yeah, I mean, well, maybe they're listening. It's too bad Diane Mulger, they can't get, I mean, nobody liked her really, but I mean, I, she was, you know, get her back. But um, no, that it, it'd be funny if they needed Lore to do it or, or if Lore was involved in something with Moriarty because of that, because Moriarty thinks he's data or. And, what, and why is why is why is Lore looking basically like Brent Spiner, who's been uh, binging at a barbecue restaurant? Yes, he right. looks just like every Brent Spiner character that it's, he's been playing. And the that's last what I'm wondering years. as well is that I, I criticized about this is that. We had great characters, like the characters that he played in the show, because he played multiple characters, obviously, yeah. but of the same sort of bloodline, the Singh uh, bloodline, right? And this guy's related to Khan and to all these people who are always like obsessed with genetics and stuff. And like every single iteration of them have always been obsessed with creating life, with doing all this stuff. Like you could bring back that sort of type again it's another one it, again it's the bloodline itself that's obsessed well, with like doing these genetic experiments and creating life and stuff you know i don't think you necessarily need lore but again lore is not certainly <laughs> looking like lore yeah he's got white hair now and whatever i'm hoping because he looks like he's got humanish skin he doesn't have the full on robot skin well and maybe he uh, maybe he perfected what we saw in um First contact where the the queen the the boar queen was attaching skin to to right to data. Well, you know, it would be great for me because like let's make lore really bad, and and by making lore really bad, I mean this. You know, lore, you've what have you grafted skin? You found a way to graft skin on your exoskeleton or your body or whatever in your entire body, and he's like, well, it wasn't hard. You know, it, it was easy to get, and he starts describing how who he killed, and he took someone's actual skin. And then, you know, Jordy's like, or whoever is like, but why did you do that? You could have just synthesized the skin. And he could have said something like, this was more fun. Like, that's like a sick thing. Like, he carved someone up for real skin rather than just synthesizing it when he could have well, just made it. And he does, you know, I believe he did uh, have a feeling chip mm -hmm. You're right. working. Yep. But he was, I believe he was disassembled the last time we saw him. And I think this was in Picard that he was disassembled. In season, so in season, I believe, six or seven of Star Trek TNG, the last time we see him is after there, he's trying to cut, he's going to pr perform brain surgery on Geordi. And they end up shutting him down when he's trying to control the Borg. And they never really explain it. They don't say like, they say like, I don't even think they say lore has been taken back or they might have said that really quickly. So we're... The assumption is, okay, Starfleet has control of lore, but they never mention that in Picard when they have B4. Hey, we tried to put Data's brain into B4. It didn't work. Hey, but what about lore? Nobody ever said, well, we never tried lore. We have lore. Does not lore somewhere? So they're going to have to quickly, I would think, throw in exposition at some point 
like after we see lore in the show of almost like well you know you know we didn't know where lore went well, after the he was stolen or after he it, got away or whatever the case is what i'm get the vibe i'm getting unfortunately and it would only make sense if there was somebody who <clears throat> it would connect to the point i'm trying to say is that it seems to be that somebody obviously the the uh, lady uh, uh amanda Plummer is her name she was uh in um so he married uh, an axe murderer pulp fiction pu- Pulp Fiction, yes, exactly. Um, so she's actually the daughter of Christopher Plummer, who played uh, General Chang. Right, Star, Trek, Star Six. Trek Six. Great Star um, Trek movie. Probably one of the best. Um, but she looks, again, from what I'm gathering, to be uh, recruiting, if you want to call it that. Say that again, Dave. And three. Did I lose you? No, I'm here. I'm just trying to, oh. you know, you can cut out so you can cut it out. I got but, it. But uh, in three, two, she looks like she's actually recruiting a bunch of different enemies mm. for Picard. Yes. And it looks like it's like a rogue gallery. It's like she's, but there's no connection. We don't know what she means to Picard. And I would have liked if, even if there's supposed to be a big reveal, there's no hints. There's no hints. As well, to I don't think who they this want to. Is. I don't think no, they want to. Be. There should no. There should be why because <coughs> then there's speculation. Oh, well, could it be this? Could it be that? Could it be uh, again? Like for example, what if it was Romulan? Could it be Seela's daughter? Could it be somebody else's? Yes. What if they were they were Vulcan, Spock's daughter? Maybe. Uh, you know, all these other people. Um, well, she's Cyborg. got human ears. We know that. Yeah, well, yes, that's the thing. But her but, name, her name is, um, I can't remember what it was. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, I didn't notice, sound- Dave, I didn't notice this before, but take a look at what she's wearing here. That's almost a bit of a slight homage to what Chang wears in uh, uh, Star Trek Six. Not quite, but I mean, you know what I mean? The red and blacks. Look at that. Uh, yeah, a little bit, but you know what? I've actually seen some theories, and I also saw this when I saw the the, the trailer. Is that if you look at her ship that's being used, it's mm-hmm. called first of all, it's called the Shrike. Now, anybody that knows you know hardcore cannon stuff knows that Shrikes um, are uh, basically attack ships that have been used by the Romulan Empire. Is this they your mother, Dave? Look like one. This might be your exactly. mom, Dave. She looks a lot like you. Ew, gross. I mean, like, you know, for an ugly woman, I guess. No. I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry. I interrupted no, but you. The, the strikes are uh, attack uh, Romulan ships, mm-hmm. uh, and they don't look like this. This, You know what this looks like? A Remus mining ship. Yeah, something Just Reman. like in fucking Nemesis. You know... So, I- I I think she's just a big red herring. I think she's a menace that's going to happen for a couple episodes, and that and, on, and that's why she's you think in the there's trailer. There's something behind her. I I bet you it's not much. I almost think it's not much. I wonder if she is a a, a complete red herring, and there's going to be a thing with her. And what I'm also wondering, and I know we're going all over the place here, but it's fun to do it, and I know we're all we over the place, to. but we have to. Yeah, we just like we've got ADD when it comes to this. I believe, I feel like there is a, a, a overarching story that we are going to follow every episode. But I also think that sprinkled into every episode will be its own little isolated story or situation so that you're almost getting a touch of, it almost reminds me of what Enterprise was like during the seasons of uh, when they were doing the whole, they had to find the Zindi, but, every, but they also kind of ran into things along the way that were separate little stories. And they actually did a pretty good job with that, even though I wasn't a big fan of it. Yeah, um, but people don't want that though. I they know. don't want overarching season long stories. They want uh, you know, standalone stories like But that's what I think. It, I think they're gonna give you as close to stand like this episode has its own little thing where Moriarty showed up for some but reason. It's a portion, it's not the whole thing. Like if you look at the original series, you look at um uh the next generation, and to a certain extent, uh Deep Space Nine. Everything after that, no, failed. But um, well, they, I like Enterprise. Could, I will say you have that. standalone stories, though. You have standalone stories that y- you can just tell somebody, "Hey, let's just watch a random channel." Oh, Star Trek. Uh, I've never seen this. Let's watch this. That episode of TNG of uh, TOS can stand alone without 
in needing to introduce you to mm-hmm. all this history in the past. Like, again, how many times do we need to see Batman or Superman or uh, Spider-Man's origin? Right. And well, and here's the thing about the standalone and the things you're talking about right now. When I first saw the first season of Picard, I sort of thought of it as a bit of a movie. I'm like, it's kind of like a movie, but it's broken up into 10 episodes and it's 10 hours long. But it's just it's a mess. But the second season was not like a movie. It was tedious. Right. So but but this but to me, it's this has been described as a movie as a 10 hour movie. Like a ser- like a almost like think of a made for TV thing where th- you get th- two hours a-, a week for a couple weeks that sort of thing. So all I'm saying is it didn't work the first two seasons. I will never watch those back to back to back ever again. It was it was horrific. It's tedious, absolutely. Like you said, it just it's too. <sighs> but if this works like a movie for real. I will buy it on Blu-ray and I will love to watch it because then you can break it up almost like it's three movies, three parts, three acts yeah, but happening. We're already seeing and and this is what's unfortunate is that I'm I'm already seeing the same thing that we saw uh previously. Uh the ship for example, they've gone back to the classical saucer nacelle body look and it's very similar to a constitution <coughs> class but it's it's Olympia class, right? It's almost like the Voyager ship, kind of, not really, or Sovereign. No, actually, but what we do see as well in this trailer is we do see the uh, Enterprise F. Right. And well, uh, that is something that not only was uh, created through the, the game Star Trek Online, but it um, it's sort of canon now. Everyone's, so the, yeah, everyone's happy I'm not about a fan that. of the design, but it is larger than the than the E. It's uh, bigger than the Sovereign class, and um, I, I, feel I the yeah, it, it, yeah, you were right. It's the Odyssey class. It's the oh, Odyssey. There class. we go. Yeah, I'm not. Listen, I'm not a big fan of this, but what I will say is it is kind of consistent with the time, you know, from what the Sovereign class was looking like. So it it's a bit consistent. It just looks a little smaller to me. And too thin. But it's actually larger. But it is larger. Okay. It is an evolution, and w- you know what? That yeah. at least is appreciated. Yeah. Uh, that, that you can notice the evolution. It's not like it just cuts off and just changes styles automatically. And uh, that's something that I I really have to crap on other seasons like well shows like Enterprise, for example, where um, they try to convince people that. Uh, these bird of praise existed when they didn't and you know it just it doesn't fall in with the canon but that's another story altogether we're talking about this yeah um they um so real quick before we look at this ship i just want to say that um in talking about this movie in this show i also think that there is going to be kind of like thing of the week at the same time as they're progressing the story I hope that's the case, such as, like I said, sort of Moriarty shows up in one, you know, Laura's in another, you know, you get the villainous, like Wrath of Khan style, vill- over the top villain, right? In- Actually, that's a great point, because one of the, the, the screenshots here, um, also uh, with the Ashes of the Federation is what's uh, being displayed in front of me. There's obviously something from this character that is indicating that they want the Federation itself, not just Picard, right. I guess, but the Federation itself to fall. Now, uh, some of the battles here, way too many explosions, to be quite honest, because shields, uh, you know, we've seen torpedoes hit shields and, you know, it's just a shimmer on the shield it's not these huge massive fiery explosions which Mm -hmm. you know if you really want to get geeky here uh there's there's no atmosphere in space so these things wouldn't occur in this way so there's there's about six torpedoes falling up into something and it's kind of getting a little ashy there and whatever and exploding and deanna this scene right there um with uh deanna looking into the fire um, <clears throat> that's what some people are speculating might be, uh, her death. So, mm. but uh, also I feel that they kind of let this character down. Apparently she, well, here's the thing. She's retired from acting. This is another reason why a lot of people speculate she might not be, uh, she might be dying. Um, but, uh, I think they, they had a lot of potential to, build that character for example if she got to the point where she trained her mind so well that she could like see the future and stuff like imagine that sort of person on a bridge yeah 
Yeah, I don't know. And I, I, they could do a lot of things with her that they, they sort of like stopped and started with her throughout the series because otherwise they have the superpower, the super person on the ship. So they kind of had to, I don't know, nerf her or whatever on the series. But yeah, she could be, or she could be witnessing something else crazy happening. To me, this is like, wow, something's bad happening and right in front of my face. And this, you know, uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Like, but I don't know, you know, wh- you know, where we're going with this. I hope that no one dies. That's all. I- but then again, if it's done really well, then that's fine. Listen, even though, you but went- how can you think it's not? I mean, I just, to me, it just, it's only inevitable that they will kill at least one or more of the original cast. I just yeah. don't see them being able to say, I commit to being able to do another 10 seasons of this stuff. Like these people already want to retire. Well, this is this is this is what I'm understanding is their last hurrah unless the studio or somebody says, "Wow, this did so well," and maybe it will. But the the only thing that they're going to be up against here is the people that refuse to watch this based on the first two seasons. Because there are some people out there that are going to see this and they're going to. Because even I'm thinking at the damn, it still looks dark. This still looks like a dark, sad, you know, future. Yes. Like I don't like that. And- and and will this be the last season of Picard? Yes, this or is the be- last season of Picard. They said that. So so, well, if that's the case, this the, the proper way. And you're right; looks too dark. The proper way to send this off is again another uh, all good things. I right. mean, you don't want to see these pe- like you want to see culmination that you can be happy with and. You know, I don't always agree with that when it comes to movies and stuff. Sometimes there needs to be some sort of hard hitting situation but regardless is these people you know have done their time with starfleet like why are they still calivanting there and uh or gallivanting i, well, say, I mean uh, it was their lives they that's all they wanted to live for at the time you know so you, i guess yeah that, but right? now Worf apparently is a pacifist but then he fights with raffi well that's either a so i believe that's either a joke or you know, well, Riker makes a joke after it, so it's probably serious. But he, I just think he means he's a he prefers pacifism first. Like he's not gonna. You but know, this doesn't match really what we've seen with, um, you know, <coughs> the well, all good things and all the other uh, time travel episodes where we see them in the future and they certainly don't act in, in this sort of way. I think. I don't know. I honestly think yeah. that there's some sort of. Uh, well, I think that adjustment also. To, no, you're right. It is a little bit. And I think, though, the Q timeline isn't necessarily going to happen 100%. And even they say that in that, I believe, that show in All Good Things. So it's not 100% that everything they saw in that episode of All Good Things is going to happen. Because um, even Deanna, like, is dead, right? And that, I, I believe Deanna's dead. Um, so that, there's your theory. That's another reason why people have that theory is because she is dead in this time at that time. So that would sync up with that. But, you know, Jordy has two children. Remember, remember because Worf blames Riker for the death of yes. Deanna. Yeah. And, and a lot of people forgot about that. So, like, that's what you're talking about. But not everything happens the way it's going to happen, right? Even, like, uh, I think, like, Picard's nephew is mentioned or something. And it's like, well, he dies in generations. Well, actually, uh, if you look at the scene where he's got... Um, th- th- Worf is talking to a guy with what appears to be a Starfleet uniform, and he looks mad. And um, that is the same actor Mm -hmm. that actually played Picard's son in uh, the Nexus. Yeah. And he was one of many kids that apparently Jean-Luc imagined. Uh And uh, this is the same actor from that point so there is speculation he might be actually playing picard's actual son oh wait so the this the guy who might is speculated to be picard's son is what he was he was an actor on the show yes at six years old he played uh well not on the show on the movie on the um generations movie he was one of the when when oh one of the kids Picard welcomes all the kids in and he's like got seven kids or something like that yeah one of them is that kid? That's crazy. Is is the actor? So there there is speculation that it might actually be him. I'm trying to look through for the clip, but yeah, I've saw the picture of him. Um, it's, I, it's Worf looking right at him, 
I want to know and how Picard had a kid, though. It's like, in a city, though. Well, that's another thing that needs to be addressed. I mean, aren't you sick of the Picard has a kid story, you know, or a clone and Jin's on and somebody? Well, that's actually another thing is that, again, there's speculation that uh, this character, played by Amanda, fuck. Uh, oh, Plum Plummer, yeah. Um, is basically uh, a, another clone of Shinzon. Or another clone of Picard, right. just like Shinzon was. So the the uniform, for example, uh -huh. the ship seemed to remind some that it might be somebody that's Reman or connected to the Romulan sort of empire. And, you know, I they could have done this so much better because in season one they addressed this. There was a lot of resentment towards Picard. First of all, this whole stupid the stupid synthoid crap yeah, yeah. should have never been covered. Ridiculous. It, it could have, but with the Romulan story, that could have actually led to something, I think, a lot better because resentment towards Picard, who, you know, proclaimed himself, you know, again, he changed. Obviously, something happened. But uh, he, you know, he started to be an SJW and uh, protect the, the values of the Romulan people and he still couldn't save their planet, blah, 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 and all that and that. And, uh, yeah, the, the resentment at least can lead to a good story. But You know what I hope the villain is at the end? I hope it's Armus. I hope he got off that planet and he's looking to kill Picard and everybody. <laughs> and he wants to kill Tasha Yar again. Well, that's what I would love. <laughs> Imagine, oh, it's me, Picard. You know, like Armus got off the planet. I would love that, but that's... He's an idiot, though, Armus. I would think that that would be the appropriate thing. That would be... and. You know, you would expect that, that it's this sort of leading to somebody that's dealt with Picard. Obviously, mm -hmm. season two, his nemesis was Q. What, what but you would think that there would be something in this season coming up that is an established enemy, but an enemy that's above all the rest. Who is this Amanda? What if, what if the top enemy, though, Dave, what if the top enemy, what if they went into the, the logs of the Enterprise and they and they researched all the all the all the enemies and all the people that Picard ever had problems with, and they went around finding them, releasing them, working with them to try to t to do this. You know what I mean? Like what? Now, why would you want to go after a guy who's like close to death anyway at this point? You know, what I mean, hey, we're gonna get you finally now that you're almost dead anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of a funny thing, but you know, but there have I don't been, know. Though, there have been situations where um, he's been studied and they've gone after him. Uh, that could be true. Oh, had to pause. Hold on. Okay. All right, we're back. Sorry. Um, yeah, there's so... Been, there's been times where, where uh, Picard uh, has had to deal with that sort of thing, of people coming yeah. back at him, so... That's why it, it uh, feels like it's got to be more. There's going to be something better, smarter at the end of this, not just... And that's why I think the Amanda Plummer thing and all this is kind of like a ruse, like a bit. You know, it's part of what we'll see. Like, I would prefer that. I would prefer yes. that, that, that she just be a puppet to somebody who's behind her that's really trying to... Like, again, we, we need somebody who can meet with Picard on his level of uh, tactical knowledge of... Again, there's been so many great standoffs between Picard and others. Um, the House of Juros, for example. Yeah. Uh, even Gowron. Like, and we're just talking, you know, Klingons, for example. There's also been the Romulans and stuff. Uh, he's even Starfleet. He stood up to them, and he's shown a tactical knowledge that that you know very few have. Yeah, I don't know who it. I mean, I, I just think that they're, we're missing something. Maybe not, but I just... Maybe not. Maybe they gave us yeah, everything yeah, in this right. trailer. You know what? You're right. Why? Because the the teaser, not the trailer, but the teaser that came uh, a few weeks prior to this one, uh, showed a lot of different things. So, right. And some of those scenes might actually be stitched together. So you might not know, you know if they're real or not. Yeah, I, I, and I just I get the feeling like there's got to be there's there's maybe there's something more, and it would this is what I would do, you know, if the first three episodes or whatever, I, I just hope that it is like this that there's all these multiple things going on because it would be exciting to see, you know, the Khan woman type of thing here. By the way, Moriarty is similar to Khan. He's been locked away by Picard and the crew in this box, you know what I mean? So marooned in this, uh, you know, simulation. So I I don't know maybe that that's sort of a thing too but maybe there's more and I I also thought Denise Crosby was supposed to be in this 
season, and I have not. She has not been in a trailer, right? I haven't so. seen that either. And I would have thought again, Sila would have potentially, or what again? What if Sila had a daughter who wanted to avenge her mother? Yes. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of potential there. Yeah. So because, I, I I don't know. Picard has faced a lot. Of, it, it, my point is, Picard has faced some amazing enemies. But this enemy that comes up that's unknown, there's no connection to it. Am I curious? Of course. But if there was a little bit of a clue that was dropped that would say, hold on, is it this? Is it that? Is it that? Then I might have a more, a larger interest in actually figuring out, you know, watching the, the series. But this character just doesn't seem compelling to me. You know, I, I, I think I, I really, I kind of like it, but the problem is in my head, I'm thinking at the same time, I'm like, well, this is an old trope here. So in my opinion, I'm like, well, they're not going to go with, this is not the main villain. You know, this old trope of like, oh, I'm going to get you Picard or, or you know, I'm going to get you uh, Captain Kirk type of thing. So that's that's why it's like, man, this is so a red herring or whatever. This is going to be the the fun beginning or something. You know, there's something more going on later that we're going to find out. It's got to be because, I don't know, because I'd be shocked if we watched the season and this was like the finale with her and I'm going to take down Picard and that was it. And she had a connection to somebody, but that was it. Because like you said, it's even with a connection. But they're not going to tell you about that in the trailer because that's obviously going to be something big or something later on. Or it's going to be, there will be something big later on that there is a problem about, but this is completely, I'm wondering if this is completely separate. You okay, uh, let me let me put it this way. Um, when you had Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, with the title, The Wrath of Khan, and you had Khan in the trailers, you really didn't know what he was going to do, but you knew that that trailer was badass. You knew who it was that he was addressing, and you knew that history because this guy obviously had reasons for revenge because he sent him to go live on a planet that and ended up you know, killing his wife. Right. Yeah. And that's what maybe Moriarty's wife has died. Wasn't he with a woman in the. That's, yep. So like there's a lot of things that they can sort of do over again. And, and, but if it was a movie by itself, you'd be like, OK, they copied Wrath of Khan. But if it's just an episode or two where, OK, look at this, like episodes one and two kind of had that Wrath of Khan feeling. Then episodes three and four kind of had that like. Uh, holodeck episode where like there, there's something to do with a holodeck and that's why Moriarty's out and that's where lore comes from and they figure that out and they move on and then they get to Beverly finally and then the bigger thing is revealed for the last four episodes you know so it's like they kind of got to go through these different uh, enemies and stuff like that and also different situations maybe there's even one episode where it's a complete throwback episode of like there's a problem on the ship or something and it has nothing to do with anything. You know what I mean? And, and that's kind of fun, you know? So I'm, I'm hoping that's the case that there's all these little things in each episode as we really get to the main issue that really isn't shown here in this trailer. And, and then I think at the very end, I would think that you would have all of the crew unveiling the enterprise. What is it? G A B C D E F G. So, well, if the F the, the F is right now the one that was featured in the trailer, so if that gets destroyed, the G would be the next obvious one. So I think you'll get like a a moment. We're we're gonna get a moment either where the, where they're all standing on the Enterprise D, um, together, kind of remembering it together, um, or it's gonna end with you know them on a brand new ship, brand new crew, just kind of there for the christening of the ship or something like that, and it will be a nice. Sort of well, thing like it's, that. it's weird because you've got in this uh, screenshot that you're showing right now with the four captain pips on Riker wearing his command red uh, and the, I guess, alternate new, you know, communicator. But um, well, that communicator the, is how different is that from the all good things one? It's pretty close, but it's different, right? It's a little bit different, but it's it's close. Um and Picard is just going, I guess, off-duty Admiral? I don't know what he's wearing here. Well, we don't know that, but we also know that in the in the uh, trailer... Uh-huh. In the trailer, uh, we have uh, Jordy, who has Commodore pips, which, again, I personally like that because I'm hardcore and, uh, you know, love the original series as well as the uh, Star Trek, uh, original Star Trek role-playing game by FASA. 
But uh, yeah, Commodore rank was a lot more used than uh, it was during TNG or afterwards. But uh, yeah, you do have uh, Jordy actually wearing those pips, and he wears them in a uniform that are both yellow, obviously for engineering, but he also has it in red, which is command. So it does lead people to suspect, well, to you know, question a few things. Well, but uh, yeah, you'll see that. I'm not sure 100 percent here. But Jordy's wearing two different outfits at, at times, like you said. This is the more Commodore outfit, which makes no, the me... Commodore, no, the Commodore's um, rank is de de uh, depicted by the pips. Those two little uh, mm -hmm. gold uh, Yeah, so this, there. this is his yeah. Commodore outfit here. But you have that, you have the same pips on him wearing a suit that has the red. Let me see the red one, because I thought he was wearing still the, yeah, it's, the, the yellow gold later. It's when he's in a street, I believe. Uh, I'm trying to find the Jordy clip, because my opinion then is I think he's got this outfit on earlier in the season, because later on he's dressed like everybody else. But what? here he's still in his uh, like real Commodore outfit. There's a, there's a portion in this um, trailer where Jordy says, you got Worf. Uh, yes. roped into this and he's wearing and he's that wearing the yellow he's wearing the gold yep. for for engineering but he's got the commodore pips right but then there's another um another scene where he looks like he's sitting back in a in a seat yes and his his uh and that's later uniform in is red but right. he's still wearing the same commodore pips so you know, so he's at that does, point. It doesn't seem to be the lighting. It seems like there's some difference here. But if no, he's, there's, no, there's if he's a Commodore, why is he? A Commodores would usually be field command, so he would have red. So it's just questionable as to why he's got the gold. And that is, that's good for Jordy too, because Jordy is someone who ends up working at. We we hear about this in the other episodes. Worked at uh, Utopia Planitia, um, in the J.J. Abrams movies the pre-comic book which is not canon anymore but he created the jellyfish starship so you know he's really in charge a lot of times of ships or creating ships or engineering of ships and fleet management of ships so it makes sense that he's a commodore people have said why is he a commodore but it kind of syncs up with what he would be doing i guess with all those other things which is fine you know you want him to be an engineer forever but being the guy who designs ships and the engineering of ships you know, or oversees that is, but you know, you can also see him as a captain though. Yes. I can. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can. Um, but you know, the only thing I don't like is when everybody becomes a captain, that drives me nuts when it's like, okay, in the future, Sulu's a captain and her is a cap. Everybody's a captain. It's that, like, that's true. You, you make a good point because you know, if he was in charge of all this stuff, he would be a Commodore. I can't remember who the guy was that uh, developed the, uh, computer systems in the original series damn i can't remember his name oh. but um i yeah. believe he held the rank of commodore as well so yeah it's not out of the blue that somebody would hold a high rank and still be working exclusively on um scientific research i like um and dr crusher is a good example here because it looks like dr crusher crusher has gone away of she's not the captain remember even in all good things she's the captain of starfleet medical ship um and but how could she send out a distress <coughs> signal? Yeah, I don't know. I, it, it, from what we're hearing, she's kind of gone off on almost some kind of a missionary type of work, like where she's volunteering to help people with her you know, knowledge and stuff. I don't mind that too much, but I did. And I know that you know how people get all excited about Seven of Nine being a commander and stuff. I, I kind of got excited about Beverly being a, a captain. Like, that is one I wanted to see because she showed interest in it. She was very smart, and she had, you know, she was a little different. I like that. I like when in TNG, both her and, um, Deanna. and Troy were showing interest in doing officer command and such and just keeping themselves upgraded. And uh, Well, I also, I like that they showed their flaws, too, that, like, you know, Dr. Crusher's a doctor, but she's pretty good at command, but she doesn't know all the technical stuff 100%, but she does know a lot of it, actually. But and, I can imagine, again, all good things, that totally is what I would imagine her to be doing at that point. I would totally see her as a medical captain, like a medical ship captain. But now it seems like she was off on some kind of rogue mission or, or on her own type of thing. I just hope it's good. It seems like it makes sense. Um, 
you know, I hope they give her. It sounds like they're going to give her. She's never shown anything to to be that type of person to to run these underground missions and stuff. Worf certainly has. Um, mm -hmm. Riker definitely. Um, but like, yeah, most of them are straight shooters and stuff. I don't, I don't see Beverly doing that. No, I mean, maybe we'll, I mean, we'll see. It's not that crazy, but I mean, this is another situation too, where they gave, you know, her Kate Gates, the real person, a lot of, you know, Hey, what do you want to do? Because you never really got a lot to do. And, you know, here's what we're thinking. And now what are you also thinking? So, you know, hopefully it's good. I think she's, you know, she understands, she likes the character. She seems to be very down to earth compared to a lot of other people. Obviously, Marina is too. She's just wild. If you ever watch her, at, you know the cons and things like that. Um, but uh, she lost her husband not that long ago. She's a little bit unhinged, you know. At those, if you go watch their their uh, the thing the other day where they unveiled this trailer, people crying, and she goes and hugs everybody in the crowd. She's very nice. Everybody else just stays up on the stage. <laughs> she runs down and hugs people. Um, but. Uh, I don't know what this is. And the bridges, you know, a lot of the... The only thing you, I think we're going to see, too, is there will be a little bit of disappointment in this season with how a lot of the bridges are going to look very similar. They're not going to look... There's no carpets back. There's no things like that. And honestly, the budget, it had to suffer somewhere because the other two seasons did what they well, did. Well, the, bu the budget should suffer because they make their, their bridges the size of football fields, okay? Right. I've always had an issue with this. TOS, perfect size bridge, nice and compact. Everything's close. You know, they actually designed it on purpose. So the way that the captain's chair was positioned, he could just turn around on his swiveling chair and see every console. Right. Now that it's like you get a yell across the room. Hey, Daniels! You could throw, you could throw a football. Yeah. Across, uh, like uh, the Voyager bridge was the worst. Oh, it yeah. Was, it was purposely wide. You could throw a football entirely across that thing and it'd be like, what, 20 yards or more. Yeah. It, it was just, it, what's the point? And more importantly is that, it, A, budget. B, it feels, it, a big portion of the attraction of Star Trek was the fact that you had the space battles. And it feels like a submarine. Why do you need these huge areas when the, the uh, thrill of the, the submarine battle is because everyone's like in an enclosed small area and, uh, you know, you got lights, you know, red lights, uh, going and, uh, it's hard to see and such. So I, I think they need to go back to smaller bridges. Yeah. And I yeah. think they tried a little bit, you know what I mean? But unfortunately when you see the view screen here, you think, okay, I think they're, they're like, I'm trying to think of discovery. You know, on Discovery, this whole... And also when Riker showed up last season, it was the Discovery Bridge that they just redid, dressed, or whatever. And this is a fucking luxury compared to the Enterprise D? Yeah, but like, look... Look, but, the, but, look how but much this, this is good, real though. estate takes place. But this is good, Dave, because look at the bottom. This, on Discovery and on the episode with Riker, where he showed up at the episode of uh, first season of Picard, this front area extended all, like for like a long time before you get to the viewer screen and it was like what is that about so they've moved the screen closer here but the screen is still very wide like discovery so it's kind of like well discovery is supposed to be before james t kirk and this is supposed to be way after that but they look almost the same and in discovery they're popping up things in the sky and moving them and here we're back to the consoles. So there's a little bit of a, you know, there's obviously a discrepancy. But you know what? I hate Discovery and I just pretend it isn't real anyway. So that's Look fun. at the distance between uh, uh, Com and uh, what's the other one? Um, um, what, left? the left and right sides? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, th there's the driver of the ship and there's the there's the Com. Yeah. On the left. <laughs> you're the, you're the, si the sort of the science... Uh, station is to the left and the right is the pilot. But they're, look at the distance. Look <laughs> yeah. at the distance between the two. I mean, like, whether bad. it be even, even with TNG where they were separated consoles, they could literally high five each other from each seat. They were close. This is not that bad, though, compared to Discovery. They're way, over, you know, like they're not even, they wouldn't even be in the shot. Mm -hmm. If this was Discovery, you wouldn't see them in the shot. Um, which is crazy. So, I don't know. I'll take this. 
a little bit, right? Because every every iteration of Star Trek, they they upgrade a bit, right? So TOS is what it was, and then TNG was a little bit bigger and a little bit spacier and a little bit whatever, and then and now this is a little bit more. I I think they've and also the movies. You look at the movies, you know th- those were they were getting dark too. They pretty much they barely had they had the carpet, but it was really dark toned in the background, the lights. So this is more in line with the next version of what you would see according to what we saw in the movies. And that's the thing that I think we have a problem with a lot of times is this show is continuing more off what we last saw in the movies. Which opposed, movies, though? Well, Nemesis and Contact. Okay. You know, and, so and the, a, the, the original or the main universe. Yeah, because if we look at, you look at the bridge, um, First Contact. You're right, actually. You're right, because it's exactly the same. First Contact's bridge is very dark. It's, uh, it's very wide. And um, it certainly doesn't give uh, a positive <laughs> light on things. Yeah, it's not quite like TNG. It's it's more dark. It's got the dark blue lights. The picture you're showing right now is actually in the good times. If you put, if you go <clears throat> show Red Alert, like it looks like a cave. Now they can high five themselves. They're actually closer here. Data and the this guy, I forget his name. They're actually, I think they're closer here than on TNG. They are. Because on TNG, here's the, here they are on TNG, right? Yeah. But that, that's like, you know, you got about three feet of space there. But, but um, they're close enough, and, and that's important too, because if, you're, uh, you know, if your crewmate is unable to access their... We've seen this in other episodes. They can't access, you know, they fall unconscious. You just lean over and you touch their, their panel. I mean, let's be honest. The, the TNG set, although it's my favorite set ever and we're going to love it forever, and I'm sure TOS fans, their favorite bridge is the original bridge there. But, you know, let's be honest. The 80s TNG bridge looks like a fucking 1980s Volvo. You know what I mean? Like, they try, like it's so 80s, just like how, you know, the 60s was the 60s. And my explanation in my head was always that in the future, people longed a bit for classiness or the past because they're so futuristic that they, they, they don't need to go around. Everything is futuristic. Look at how futuristic it is. You wouldn't want to do that. You'd almost want to have a throwback look. While integrating like today, the everyone wants to be nostalgic. Yes, exactly. Like so, you're, exactly. But I, I don't see I don't see eighties when I see the the TNG bridge. And there's so many great iterations because you've got the the show, the photo that you just showed where all the seats were separate. Then you had I think season two where there was a bench mm-hmm. behind them all, and uh, it sort of connected everything together. Then you have the additional seats that were added, where you could have five people sitting on the bridge and stuff, and you know. It was, the, the seat that pulled down. Um, but, you know, the great part also is that we've seen that bridge, the the TNG Enterprise. This, uh, is, this is the Enterprise E-bridge. E-bridge. This is the E-bridge. Yeah, but the D-bridge has been adapted as well for whether it be uh, All Good Things or uh, the episode where... Uh, oh, Yesterday's Enterprise? Yes, thank you. Uh, we've seen adaptations to mm-hmm. that bridge. And they still look amazing. Yeah, no, I love I, I. That's the style that I love the most, and that's the style I always love. But you know, but this this, this is looks, the sovereign class yeah, darkness. The sovereign here. class bridge very much looks also like uh, the um, the the new one. No, uh, it was the DS. I, oh I don't know if yeah, it's not working tonight. Are you thinking uh, of the 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 voyage? The Defiant. Voyage, the oh, Defiant. the Defiant. Yeah, the, yeah. And the Defiant is also, tiny, so. Yeah, but the thing is, though, the bridge also was way too large, I think. Yeah, for the Defiant. It was still small. It was smaller than, you know, uh, other bridges, but it was still, I think, a little too large considering the size of the bridge. And I just, I didn't like it because, again, like you just showed with the, the, the D, or sorry, the E, you got, like, what is this, theater lighting? Yeah. On this side. Yeah, it looks like, like the this? movie theater lighting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like welcome to the movie theater. You can sit, watch a movie in the Star Trek. Yeah, it was. I mean, because it looks a little cheaper dated at this point. You know, I mean, I think that's the thing about the the original TNG bridge. We were just talking about it, and and I know I said it looks like a Volvo, but my point is, I think it's that it less is more, and that's what like the even in the original series when you look at it was at, perfect, dude. It had pull out chairs at the back. They didn't have to stand there all the time. They could pull out the chairs. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like the original design. It was so modular. That's the thing. There were so many things. Oh, Michael Kuda, for example, mm-hmm. who was one of the main producers and stuff. The guy wrote the uh, 
you know, these manuals that had all this information that it brought it all together and even brought the signs into it. He was contacting scientists and stuff to make sure that the science lined up properly. So they really thought a lot when it came to making TNG. I think that, um, well, I think we got to kind of wrap it up now. I mean, we could really do another hour. I think talking <laughs> yeah, we about certainly this. could. But... <laughs> this is kind of ridiculous. But yeah, in summary, I'd say um, I don't see anything from the Picard trailer that entices me to to watch. Um, well, I may end up watching at least at some point, but I would like some. I would like a hook. That's what I want. A hook. Something that would say, okay. Here's a little hint. Well, you didn't. You didn't. Maybe but what's you, coming up? You didn't think Moriarty or Lore or this new villain and see this wasn't a hook for you. No, no. Wow. Why? Because again, the whole thing is okay. I'm gathering Picard's greatest enemies. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, who the fuck are you then? Because I want to know why you're doing this. What's your motivation? That's why what, you got to watch the show. Even, no, but there's got to be at least some sort of speculation, in my opinion, as to why, uh, like, could it be this person? Could it be that person who's coming back for blood? People that that watch Picard are the ones that are interested in the character Picard, right? It's not like normally well, someone I and say, yeah, I've never seen this show. I'm just going to watch it because it says Picard. I got to be honest, man. Like, I all I want to see I love these characters together and I love these characters in TNG. So honestly, I keep watching to watch the family that I loved watching when I was young be back again. That's and do stuff and like and and have good stories with them. That's okay. what I'm watching for and and I and they and I was, you know, unfortunately let down for the most part let down in season 1 and and definitely let down in season 2. So I'll give them this. One thing I do watch for is the visuals. Because I love good cinematography, and when CGI is done right, it, it is enjoyable. But, yeah, there's been some great space battles. There's been some great effects and stuff. And, uh, you know, just continuing on that universe, you you know, making certain technologies evident and so forth. It's uh, it's interesting. I You know, it's a nice visual uh, addition to it, but... You know, when some of these stories get a little too uh, political, yeah, uh, they they take away from it because although that's the thing, TNG or even TOS could do uh, fuck uh, Deep Space Nine could do political stories, but they didn't have to smack rub you it over the head with it. Yeah, yeah, it just like it was it it stood on its own, and in the end, and I talked to to Joe about this a while ago, is that in the end. Star Trek always says to the viewer, you decide what's right or wrong. Right. You decide whether or not this character made the right move or not. Yeah, it's not wagging its finger at you, which is, again, what, you know, Patrick Stewart wanted to do and what the, what obviously the people working on the show wanted to do, especially in season two. So, and Dude, uh, one of the best things, I got to interrupt, sorry, yeah. but it, again, what happened with Ensign Rowe uh -huh. when she abandoned the ship? And Picard had uh, tried to support her as much as possible and stood up for her uh, with uh, Starfleet and so forth. And she ends up leaving and abandoning him. And that at the end of that that episode where mm -hmm. I think Riker ends up going to talk to him and he's like not even not very responsive. And then Riker leaves, you know, understanding. And all you see is Picard looking out into space. Yeah. Like like obviously distraught, but like troubled. <laughs> Like that, and that's what the, it's left with. That's the last scene you see on that show. There's no happy ending. It's like this guy now has to deal with the fact that this this woman that he thought that he could help and and was going to support him now made him look bad, but more importantly betrayed him. So it's stories like that that we've seen on TNG that I think are the most uh, compelling because they leave the audience having to decide for themselves what was right and wrong right it makes you think and that's what current star trek really doesn't do it yes. makes you feel it makes you feel dumb and it makes you think <laughs> they're dumb and then you're like wow okay so yeah i mean listen discovery has been trash um the first season was the best and i and i didn't like that season and i can't believe right. it got worse but it did and picard has been really bad as well but it's worse because it's 
characters and a timeline and continuity you love. So when it's bad, it's not just, you know, that it's bad. It's that it's like stabbing you in the chest at the same time. So, yeah, Discovery has been all bad. Picard 1 and 2, bad. And so can yeah, Picard... Yeah, but the problem is that we're nerds and eventually <laughs> we're going to probably end up watching this thing. Oh, I'm going to watch. I'm already, I'm already a moron. I'm already a moron and I'm already get, I, I get excited. I'm watching it over and over. I mean, we're talking about it. You know, we didn't even talk about... I talked about the first episode of the first season of Picard and I was excited. And then I watched it go downhill and I went, oh boy. But we're not going into this, you know, wanting to hate this. We want to like this stuff. Yes. And, you know, I, I, I'm... Look, I've been burned twice already, you know, the... Shame me once, or what's it called? I yeah, can't fool even... me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Exactly, but the third time, is it going to be the charm? I don't know, but I really do want to see a, an enjoyable Star Trek series for you know the first time in, what, 20 years? Yeah, yeah. forever. <laughs> I mean, I... I love all the original stuff. I really do. I, I no matter what I put on, I love it. I love. I mean, yes, Voyager falls apart here or there, and yes, you know, Enterprise a little goofy with some of the weird stuff, the continuity and some things they do, and they had a low budgety and they fell apart. But I love Enterprise, and I I can and I like Deep Space Nine a little bit, um, and I and I really like parts of Voyager, and I dislike other parts. But overall, I enjoy all that time of star trek and of course the you original could throw a, a, a dart to a dartboard with a bunch of different tng episodes and i'm sure that you would watch them without any question whatsoever oh yeah no i would watch any episode of tng i mean even tos is like you know the first season is is pretty much great but there's episodes you know that aren't very good in the second oh, of course and third. but that's there's been a lot of episodes in all star trek shows that haven't been very good i mean the musical with uh voyager oh yeah, yeah. well uh, hey what about when um i just thought of something remember remember deanna's like i feel darkness on the ship and this awful darkness and stuff maybe it is armis <laughs> maybe armis is back i mean like wouldn't that be weird i mean that guy was a psycho if there's a reason to garner all of Picard's uh, most treacherous villains, somebody who should have that power should be the one controlling shit. And they should be the ones that are, I guess, at least hinted to. Right. So if this is the case, then I think that we're lacking when it comes to what we were shown because there's got to be something to tell us. Who's bringing this to us? It'd be great if it was somebody like like you said, and they were like looking through the Enterprise's conflicts. Do you know what I mean? And they were like, "I found every baddie I could." And that's what I think. That's what I think. The crystalline I, I think entity too. Like, there's another crystalline entity. I brought that here to kill whatever. I mean, why would this happen? It seems a bit comic booky. I will say that, and it seems. And I said this to you earlier. It kind of even already what we're seeing in the trailer. It reminds me of Batman from the 60s when they did that that special, the hour movie or whatever it was. Yes, yes. And all the bad guys come together to go after Batman. That's what, I mean, it may not be that at all, and I'm just being ridiculous. It just seems that way. It yeah. certainly does. We've got one villain. We don't know who they are, but they seem crazy. And, and then it, it also got... seems to be the way that they want to do things. Is that how else can we like go up beyond last season? Right. Is have someone try to... You know, try to get all these people, uh, his worst enemies ever, to attack him all at the same time. It's a very Joker type move. And then know? we'll wake up, and it was all, and we'll wake up. It will be Picard season one. And it'll pet the dog, and then this was actually all a dream. <laughs> and then he'll go, uh, and then the the lady will, the Romulan lady will be like, "Are you ready, Jean Luc? Today's the day." And he's like, "Yes, I'm ready." And you think it's the reporter coming to ask about the problem, but it's actually the day of the christening of the new Enterprise, and they all are on the bridge and. Picard dreamed everything. <laughs> Are they going to ignore that too? What happened with um, this character who traveled through time and was a protector? And uh, oh god, that was terrible. But yeah, like that was Gary Seven's ripoff like, thing. Oh god, just just make the first two seasons go away somehow. You know, I'll never watch them. I'm just, I'm I, I am capable of pretending stuff didn't happen. Like I, I can do that with the, so it's not going to bother. I've done me. the same thing with Discovery. So, mm -hmm. and I, by the way, I will say one nice thing about Discovery: the last five episodes or whatever, when the big reveal happens about what's going on, I think that was awesome. I, and that's the only good thing I'll ever say about that show, because I was watching it, and as that was happening, I'm like, "What's going on?" And then when they revealed it, I was like, "Damn, this is 
kind of awesome. Like that was one of the best, rev- like, I don't know. That was really cool. But everything else has been awful in that show and everything. So, and the drop in, we're just going to swear at everybody. All right. I really got to go. We really got to go. So I'm going to watch. I think you're going to end up watching, but you know what? You, you can gauge me. If me and Leah are watching, then you probably want to watch because Leah, you asked earlier and I don't think I ever answered it. My wife, she watched the whole first season of Picard, but by the end, she was tortured by it. And then in the second season, she bailed in the middle of the third episode. She's like, I'm out. I can't blame her. I felt the same way, but I'm also quite sadistic. So I'll just put myself through the punishment and, uh, and watch this. If you want to see a child's mother kill herself, <laughs> I mean, like, and you want to feel like dying, uh, watch Picard season two. You'll love it. It's great. Everybody's dead and people <laughs> die and people hang themselves. It's what a wonderful time. Um, all right, guys. Well, Picard season three, there's so much more we could say, and we probably will eventually. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you subscribe, leave comments down below. If you've watched this far, write Picard is hard in the comments. I don't know. And, and live uh, long and prosper. See you next time.